man. Origin of the Crypt Keeper Tales from the Crypt is a unique horror franchise because it presents both real and artificial horror, which gives us horror fanatics a pleasurable yet deadly ride. Naturally, the iconic anthology became a favourite among the masses as soon as it premiered, but a significant contributing factor to its success has to be its famous narrator and host, the Crypt Keeper. He used a plethora of puns and introduced and concluded the show in his well-known outspoken manner. The show ran for seven seasons and comprised more than a hundred episodes, but there was one episode titled Lower Birth that detailed the origin story of the Crypt Keeper. The show was known for its surprise endings, and the episode Lower Birth followed suit. It was the only episode where he actually appeared in the story, rather than serving as the show's host. Apart from the show, there has been an animated show titled Tales from the Crypt Keeper, and two films titled Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood. In this video, we will explore episode 15 of season 2 of the show, that details the story of a travelling carnival and serves as the origin story of the Crypt Keeper himself. Furthermore, we will chalk out the differences in the origin stories of the Crypt Keeper, from the show and the comic on which it's based. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Boy. In the opening segment, the Crypt Keeper says, The bath bags has a narrator nauseating novella with a very special place in my heart. As many of you would know, these carnivals and their attractions were the only sources of entertainment for people in the past. There was no radio, films, television, internet, or even comics. These carnivals would settle in open tracks near small towns. Sometime around the third quarter of the 19th century, a carnival arrived at a small town in the Ozark Mountains. The carnival brought with it Feely's fantastic Fairway of Freaks, which had several attractions, like an enormously large fat lady, a family of dwarfs, and more. What made Feely's show a hit among the townsfolk was Enoch, the two-faced man. He was a grotesque looking person with another face growing from the right side of his face. Both these faces had an array of decayed teeth, eyes that resembled an old man, and hair that seemed to be falling off due to sickness. Enoch was owned by and brought to Mr. Feely by one Mr. Sickles, who maltreated Enoch and released his anger from other issues by thrashing Enoch. But a graver issue with poor Enoch is that his clock is ticking, and he would soon die of natural causes. And without Enoch, Mr. Feely's sideshow would become another two-bit sideshow, with typical attractions and nothing special. Although Mr. Sickles tried to bribe the company doctor to keep this fact a secret from Mr. Feely, the latter got to know about it. What would Feely and Sickles do when Enoch is gone is not quite a mystery. But then, a mysteriously shifty Brick came to Mr. Sickles and introduced himself as Dr. Zachary Kling. He tells Sickles that he had an offer to make, a salvation of sorts to save Sickles from his impending retirement. Kling had an Egyptian mummy in his possession, who he had won from a game of poker from an archaeologist who didn't have the money to shell out. The mummy was the only female mummy in all of America. She was called Marana by the Egyptians, but Klings liked to call her Myrna. Now, the story of Myrna is fairly interesting. She was the lady-in-waiting for the pharaoh's wife, but her beauty and body soon caught the pharaoh's fancy. He approached her, but she declined his advances because she was extremely loyal to her queen. Angered by this disobedience, the pharaoh ordered her to be mummified alive, and for 4,000 years, the sarcophagus in which she was buried became her home. Zachary Kling offered to give Myrna to Sickles on the condition that Sickles would pay Zachary 40% of the commission. Realising that this was the only option he had, Sickles agreed to the offer. Myrna turned out to be a blessing for Feely's fantastic fairway of freaks. With her as a new attraction, people started to show up for the sideshow in large numbers. Myrna clearly had a great deal of impact on new customers, but more than that, she also impacted Enoch. Enoch had clearly fallen in love with a 4,000-year-old mummy. One day, a young girl named Elizabeth wandered near Enoch's cage and gave him a doll before leaving. Enoch pressed the doll against his chest as if it were his baby, but then came Sickles in one of his usual rounds to taunt and thrash Enoch. But in the cage, Sickles noticed a newspaper article that said Myrna was a precious stolen artefact. Enraged by this knowledge, he went to confront Kling, who conceded to stealing the mummy from a boat in New Orleans. However, Kling also tells him that it wasn't the ancient mummy that interested him, but the necklace she was wearing. 
Apparently the necklace was very valuable, but at the same time, very cursed. Anyone who tried to take it from the mummy ended up getting castrated. A jewel for a jewel. But Sickles didn't believe in his story and grabbed a huge pair of scissors to take the necklace himself. As he stormed out of there, Kling sort of clung onto him, but Sickles accidentally stabbed Kling. Not wanting to get caught, Sickles goes to Enoch's cage and plants the murder weapon there. After which, he goes to Myrna, and after much struggle, he manages to pull the necklace out of her bony and decaying neck. But Enoch had had enough of Sickles' sick treatments by now. He had endured the crude behaviour all his life. But when Sickles touched Myrna in a compromising and hurtful way, he lost his cool and charged at Sickles, only to slash his jewels with the pair of scissors. Strangely, the castration curse that Kling was talking about had been fulfilled. Mr. Feely didn't know about these events and resumed his show as per schedule, only to find that Sickles was placed in Myrna's sarcophagus and Enoch was gone. Enoch had taken the very dead Myrna and disappeared into the dead of night. A year later, the police show up at Mr. Feely's sideshow to inform him that his missing attraction has been found in a cave. Upon arriving at the cave, Feely saw the craziest sight of his life. And remember, he runs a freak show business. Enoch, the two-faced man, and Myrna, the long-dead mummy, were lying wrapped in each other's arms. Feely and the cops left the place, but they missed another being present in the vicinity. The result of Enoch and Myrna's copulation, the fruit of their twisted tale of love. It was a hideous baby. It was the Crypt Keeper. As we mentioned earlier, the episode was based on the 1950 comics Tales from the Crypt issue 33, and the show took some artistic liberties to have a few changes made from the comics. For instance, in the comics, Myrna was an already existing exhibit at Feely's Sideshow, who would be introduced to the audience by Zachary Kling, a retired archaeologist. Later in the comics, Jebson Sickles would approach Feely and tell him about a dead man named Enoch who had two faces. So in the comics, Enoch had already been dead and would be preserved with formaldehyde. Furthermore, Enoch and Myrna escape from their containments and get married. But the most striking difference between all of the Crypt Keeper comics and the shows is the appearance of the Crypt Keeper. In the show, he looks like a deformed, decaying and skeletal figure but the comics present him as an old man with white hair. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe. There, there. Isn't he just so cute that you want it?